Let's step up our game with the Visionnaire Cipher. The Visionnaire Cipher is very similar to Caesar, except in Caesar we passed in a single integer as our key. In Visionnaire, we're going to pass in a key word. So if I wanted to shift the ciphertext, this is CS50 by OHI, then that means that each letter in OHI is going to serve as the key, and I'm going to cycle over that keyword for my shift, making the ciphertext a lot harder to decode. What does it mean to shift by the keyword? Well, the keyword is a string where every letter corresponds to some integer shift. So the O corresponds to a key of 14, H to a key of 7, A has a key of 0, so that wouldn't change anything, and then I has a key of 8. Say I ran Visionnaire A with the plain text, this is CS50. Well, that would simply give me an unchanged string. Notice that this is equivalent to running Caesar with a key of 0. In fact, running Visionnaire with any single character would be equivalent to running Caesar with that same integer. All right, so since they are so similar, I'd actually recommend that if you want, you can just copy your Caesar code into your Visionnaire code. Things will change, but at least you have some backbone that you can work with. Because the to-dos are the same, we want to get the key, get the plain text, encipher that plain text, and then print that out. Just like Caesar, the key is going to be passed in as the second command line argument contained in argv index 1. But it's different this time because it must be alphabetical. So we need to iterate over every single character in that key that the user passed in and ensure that every character is alphabetic in order to continue. Once we've done that, then we can get the string from the user just as we did before. And now we come to the heart of the problem for Visionnaire, which is just like Caesar, how to figure out the enciphering pattern in an equation and encipher the entire plain text. So you'll notice that the equation for the Visionnaire shift is very similar to the Caesar one. The only difference is that instead of a single variable k before, now k has a subscript indicating the jth letter of the key. Let's walk through an example. Say you wanted to pass a secret message onto your crush. I like you. Well, for your key, you choose something that you know your crush knows that you like, pandas. All right, so how do we shift this? Well, we have our plain text index. That's at the first letter, and so is the index for our key, which is at the P, the first letter in our panda word. So, shifting I by P gives us X. Then we advance the plaintext index. This gets us to a space. Now the space character is non-alphabetic, so that means that that just transfers right over to the ciphertext, and we put a space there. And we don't advance the index for our key. So we're still at P at this point. We advance to the next index in our plaintext. And now because that is a letter, the lowercase l, we shift that by the next index in our key, which is A, which is a zero shift, so that just becomes an L in our ciphertext. Then we advance both the plain text and the key index because it's alphabetic. So then we continue that until we get to the E in like. All right, so you'll notice at this point that in terms of our key index, we've reached the end of the panda word. So what happens when we get to the next alphabetic letter in the plain text? Well, all that happens is we wrap around to the beginning, to the first index of our key. So then we shift that Y by P to give us N. And then we continue finishing encoding our plain text to get X livne no. From this example, I showed that we only advance to the next letter in the keyword if the character in plain text is a letter. So the isAlpha function will come in handy here. And just as in Caesar, we want to preserve the case, is upper and is lower. So add this little bit in into your pseudocode. So how do we figure out the key shifts? Well, if you recall our discussion on alphabetical indices in the Caesar problem, it's very similar. 
where A corresponds to an ASCII value of 65, but a shift of 0. And then the last letter in the alphabet, Z, corresponds to a shift of 25. You'll notice that the shift is identical whether or not the letter is uppercase or lowercase. Okay, so now that you know how to figure out the numerical shift that corresponds to a single character, let's go back to our equation. Because we have two different subscripts here, i and j, that's a hint that we want to keep track of both our position in the plain text as well as our position in the keyword. So those are two separate variables that we want to keep a hold of. Now the position in our plain text is going to increase every time, so that's going to be a bit more straightforward as opposed to the position in the keyword, which we know has to wrap around and sometimes increment, sometimes stay the same. So how do we implement the functionality to wrap around the index for the keyword? I'm going to use the count off example. Counting off is a popular way to split people into groups. Say I had five people and I wanted to split them up into three groups. Well then I would start by counting off. The first person would say I'm team number one. The next person would be team number two. The third person, team number three. Now, I only want three groups, so the fourth person would actually start at the beginning and say, well, I'm team number one as well, and the next person would be team number two. And from there, they can then separate into their groups. So, how might I use modulo to help me implement this count off wraparound function? Well, the first person, number one, mod three gives us one. 2 mod 3 gives us 2, and 3 mod 3 gives us 0. The fourth person, number 4, mod 3 gives us 1, and then 5 mod 3 gives us 2. So you'll notice that even though the number of people that I have increases and is above 3, since I'm modding by 3, I always get numbers 0, 1, and 2. I never get larger than 3. So then even if I had 10 people, then all of those people would still be within groups 1, 2, or 0. So now we know that if we have a group of 5 and we mod all of those by 3, then we're never going to exceed groups 0, 1, or 2. So we're never going to get a group number that's equal to 3 or above. So even if I add 5 more people, then all of them would still be assigned to groups 0, 1, or 2 because I'm modding by 3. I'm never going to exceed that cap. Okay, so let's see if we can apply this concept of using modulo to wrap around the group numbers and apply it to Visionnaire where we want to use modulo to wrap around the index for the keyword. Even though we're incrementing the index, we always want to make sure that we always wrap around to the very beginning, never exceeding the length of the string. Okay, so I know it might be a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot more to do in this piece set. So make sure that you write out a good pseudocode for yourself that you understand and that gets the job done. Try and address every single line independently, figuring out all the little small pieces of the puzzle before putting it together. Make sure that you can get the key from the command line and ensure that it's alphabetic. Get the plain text from the user. And then in enciphering, make sure you know how to encipher a single letter and then progress to the whole string with all of the wraparound functions. Finally, you can print the ciphertext. My name is Zamaila, and this was Visionnaire.